In this video, we're going to cover the use of dialog boxes, which are a good way of communicating to the user or allowing simple user interactions or user inputs. We're going to start with the basic message box, which we'll be creating by opening up our VBA window and inserting a module. We'll go to the Developer tab and click Visual Basic. In the VBA window, click Insert, Module, and now we'll create a public sub. We'll call this example message, put our parentheses, and hit enter. Now, the terminology associated with a basic message box is MSGBOX for message box, so we'll type that and hit space. You should see a yellow bar pop up below your mouse. These are all of the inputs that the function message box is set up to accept. Not all of these available inputs are required for every type of function you might use in VBA. You can look up all of the functions and terms in the object browser library or on Microsoft's help site. As an example, we can search for message box in the object browser library by clicking on the object browser button and typing message box into the search bar. Hit enter to search. In our search results, we see this interaction class member message box, which is what we're using. Click on that and make sure message box is selected as your member of interaction. You can see the function inputs appear at the bottom of the screen, and you can click the links to navigate to those particular inputs to see what valid options might be. Again, this is all available through Microsoft's help site, which actually provides further examples and more clarity. For now, let's close out of the browser and we'll talk through the message box inputs one by one. The first input is prompt, which is the text that will appear in the message box. We can type a little hello message here as an example, and that message should be surrounded by quotes to signify that it is text. Anytime you use text in VBA, it must have quotations around it, so the code recognizes it as a string of text and not as key VBA code words. Commas separate the function inputs, so we'll put a comma next to show that our prompt input is complete. Next is the type of buttons. If we don't type anything here, the system will just use an OK button for the message box. So we'll skip this as an example by not typing anything and just putting another comma. Next is the title, which is the text that will appear in the blue bar above the message as its title. We'll type example, again in quotations, to denote text. Help file and context link a help file for the user and are generally unused, so we'll leave those off entirely. Let's go run this macro to see what happens and what the message box we have built looks like. We'll minimize the VBA window, and in our Excel file, under Macros, we'll highlight Example Message and click Run. We see that we get a message box that says Hello. It is titled Example and the only button we have is the OK button, which we'll go ahead and click to close out a message box. Now, sometimes you might use the message box as we just did to simply communicate something to the user. This could be a message saying the code was successfully executed, a message containing a data point the user might need, or an alert message to make them aware of an error. In these cases, the user doesn't need to interact with the message other than to simply acknowledge that they read it, so the OK button will suffice. But let's say you have a question you want the user to respond to. You have a few options. The first is to change the button type of the message box. We can change the buttons to display as something like yes and no, for example, and retrieve a binary data point from the user. For example, let's go back to our simple message box and we'll adjust the button type, which is this middle function input here. Instead of leaving this blank, we'll type VB, yes, no. VB, yes, no means our message box will now display with a yes button and a no button instead of simply an okay button. Let's go back to our code and run this to get an example. Under macros, make sure you highlight example message and click run we can see we have the same message prompt and we have the same message box title, but instead of a single OK button, we now have a Yes button and a No button. You can click on either of those to close the message box. 
In later videos, we'll talk about if statements, which we can then use to assign a certain set of actions to whether the user presses yes or no. This is a really simple way to allow your user to interact with the database, but it only provides a binary data point, yes or no. Let's say you want the user to actually input a piece of information. This is what you would use an input box for, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. An input box takes a piece of information that the user types and provides and stores it in a variable that you predetermine. As an example, let's create a variable by declaring a variable we'll call ex, and we'll say this variable is a string, which means text. Now to assign a value to this variable, we'll type ex equals, and instead of typing our usual piece of text surrounded by quotes, we're instead going to type input box, and then an open parentheses. Now we can see that this has very similar inputs to the message box. It's going to display very similarly to the message box. So as our prompt, we'll say in quotes, what is your favorite color? For the title, we'll say color. And for now, we can ignore the rest of these options. They mainly have to do with the positioning of the box on the screen. So we'll allow the box to pop up in the center of the screen or wherever it likes. So we'll hit close parentheses to close our input box. Now after the input box runs, we'll have a value stored in our ex variable. So let's return that ex variable in our regular message box that we have down here. So we'll add to this prompt and say your favorite color is. Now we probably don't want to put the favorite color on the same line. Maybe we want to add an empty line in between this statement and the resultant favorite color that has been stored in our variable. In order to do so, we're going to type an AND sign. The AND sign tells the system we have a piece of text on the left of this AND sign, and I'm about to give you another piece of text on the right side of the AND sign, and I want you to combine them into one really long piece of text. The reason that we put the AND sign there is because what usually follows the AND sign or precedes the AND sign is a variable or a VBA interaction. So in this case, we're trying to add a new line, which is going to be VBCRLF, and then hit space. This particular code, VBCRLF, tells VBA that we're trying to insert a new line. So now, as a whole, in our prompt right now, we have a piece of text that says, hello, your favorite color is, then we've told VBA we're about to combine this with more text, in this case, I'm going to enter a new line. I'll use the AND sign again. Let's enter one more new line just so we can really see the effect. AND sign again. So VBA still knows I'm still stringing together text because I keep using these AND signs. And then we're going to type EX, which is the variable that we've created up here that should have the value of the favorite color. Go ahead and jump out of that message box. And we can see everything is capitalized, nothing has turned red, so this seems to be the correct code that we need. Let's go ahead and run this and we'll get an example of how this works. Minimize your VBA window, go to macros, and run the example macros one more time. We see we have this input box, it's asking what is your favorite color, and it's titled color. In this case, I'll say my favorite color is blue, and click OK. Now I get my example message box, which says, hello, your favorite color is new line once, new line twice, and then the favorite color that I just inputted, blue. And again, my title is still example. My buttons are still yes and no because that's what I've preset the message box to be. But now we have a better understanding of how to create message boxes, how to string together text, and how to use input boxes for simple user interaction. The last thing we're going to talk about are alert messages in Excel and how we can turn them off. Now, we've seen that it can be really helpful to build display boxes and message boxes to help communicate with the user. 
Excel has some of its own internal message boxes and display alerts that it will give the user when it's trying to do something like save a file. When you try to save a file in the background in the VBA code, Excel might prompt the user with a message box asking whether or not the user really wants to save. It can be frustrating when you're trying to automate a process and you continue to get pop-up messages from Excel itself. There is a way to turn off these alert messages, and that's what we're going to talk about. If we open up our VBA window and go up to the top of our code here, we're going to type application dot display alerts equals false. Now let's break this down for a second. Application tells VBA that we're dealing with the Excel application, specifically this file that we have open. The dot moves one level further into the options that we can apply to that application. In this case, we're looking at the display alerts property of the Excel file. And we've set it equal to false, which means Excel will no longer display alerts that are intrinsic to Excel. It will still display your message boxes, your input boxes, your user forms. It just won't display messages such as a save message or an overwrite message. Now, generally speaking, it's best practice to make sure we always turn these back on at the end of our code. So right before we end the sub, we'll type application.displayalerts equals true. Now in this example, anything that falls between this display alerts equals false and the display alerts equals true would not be subject to Excel's internal messages and alerts and pop-up windows. So I recommend doing this when you're doing a lot of save options or things that might be creating pop-up windows that the user would have to continue to interact with. It'll just slow down your code, so it's a good idea to use display alerts equals false as long as you turn it back on at the end of your code. So in this video, we covered message boxes, input boxes, and how to control Excel's pop-up windows. Hi there, this is Steve. I hope you're enjoying these awesome Excel VBA tutorial videos by Gillian. If you are and you want to learn a ton more, you can join the full course. The link is in the description below and you'll get a ton more content where she'll walk you through mastering all of the ins and outs of VBA. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in there.